Welcome to From Concept to Concert with the HPO. My name is Abigail Richardson Schulte and I'm composer in residence. Now today I'm delighted to be joined by two of our upcoming guests. We have Jeremy Dutcher with the HPO and conducted by Lucas Walden. Welcome Jeremy and Lucas. Hi there. Ah, great to have you here. So uh, today we're going to be talking about your show for orchestra. Um, but before we get to that, Jeremy, if you could just answer a few questions for us on, you know, how your your album came to be. You made a, a debut album, which won the Polaris Music Prize. Oh my gosh, that's pretty huge. Yeah. <laughs> you did. You did. Did you win that? Um, Congratulations. <laughs> I have forgotten about that. That's great. Uh, I yeah. doubt it. I doubt it. It's quite quite something. But um, you know, I think at the the core of these uh, of your album are these amazing wax recordings of your ancestors, or like seeds. I see it for this album. So could you talk a little bit about how that came to be? That's a beautiful way to look at it. Like seeds. I love that. Um, yeah, I'm really really happy to talk about this journey because I think it. Well, it's, yeah, it's definitely in, informed what I get to do now for, for a life. And it was my, this is, uh, this record was my very first. It started as a, at a, a as like a, a conversation at a, at a kitchen table um, uh, with an elder of mine named Maggie Paul. And um, I, I had gone there actually as like a researcher, like a student researcher, uh, like wanting to know more about our, our songs, like the old songs. And she kind of, she said, well, if you want to know about the old songs, you actually, you can't even stay around here on the East Coast. You have to go to the museum because that's where the, that's where they, they kept the old songs. And I said, what, what do you mean kept the old songs? Anyway, so she kind of put me on this path to like go and start digging through the, the archive in, in Ottawa, uh, which was then called the, the, the Museum of Civilization and has now um, been rebranded to, to be the Canadian Museum of History. So, um, so I spent um, a couple of weeks there, kind of digging through, um, kind of their uh, their uh, what do we call this collection? Uh, you know, their archive and what they what they had collected among my ancestors in the early 1900s, and found these amazing recordings. Like, just put me beside myself when I heard these recordings, just because they they kind of speak out to you. You know, when you hear them. Because uh, you can hear the whole world around them. You can hear the, the conversations even happening in the background or them telling the story about why they're singing this song. And, um, anyway, it was just, the, the, it felt like a, a, a really beautiful snapshot and one that I wanted to share with people. You know, to go and to witness something beautiful is one thing, but like, how are you gonna, how are you gonna share it? Yeah. You know, how are you, gonna, how are you gonna turn that into something that, that can be uh, acts, accessed you know accessible can can be because at a certain point like there's a reason that i didn't know that these songs even existed it's because they lived in a museum and they were not accessible to young indigenous people right. and so that was kind of the that was the kind of problem i was hoping to solve with this record and kind of like recontextualizing the songs and kind of harmonizing them because they're just they're 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 they're, they're just like drum and, and and vocal line melodies and, and pretty pretty repetitive and in a beautiful way, but but for me as a as a composer and as somebody sitting at a piano and trying to work my way through this harmony, um, that was a real challenge. And um, but a, a really beautiful one. And yeah. um, and then to, to get to take it to the next step with with the orchestration, uh, this was like you you got to know your limitations. Look, you know, it's like uh, I I came down to this world to do a couple things. Okay, um, you know, writing massive scores for orchestras is not one of those things. However, if you can team up with somebody who can do that and can bring those kind of visions and, and big dreams to life, um, and they're a good hang, oof. <laughs> yeah, now you're clearly referencing Lucas here. Lucas, uh, before we get to how you two uh, collaborated, I mean, I know you as a conductor and a flute player. I didn't know that you're also an arranger. How did you get into orchestral arranging? Uh, necessity necessity i mean uh you know a lot of projects like you know like jeremy and, and and others are such great um artists in our in our province in our country that uh you know should be featured in in, in front of an orchestra and you know that it's just that one key it's that one uh you, you know kind of vehicle to to featuring these artists is 
uh, arranging their music. For, so for those out there, that means taking the musical content uh, that exists in a, in a, in a recording of a, of a, of a uh, pop artists or an ind indigenous artist or whatever, uh, and, and, and kind of distributing it or expanding it uh, or throughout the orchestra. Because, you know, in a, in a band, like Jeremy often plays his songs with uh, maybe three people, a trio, sometimes five people. And, you know, something like the Hamilton Philharmonic will have 50, 60 people in it. So, um, you know, how do you uh, distribute that musical content uh, in, in a way that, uh, you know, stays true to the music, but also lets the orchestra breathe and, and add its own, uh, you know, life to the project. So, I mean, like, so just by necessity, I mean, there were so many great artists I, I wanted to work with and feature on stage and, and they didn't uh, have those, uh, you know, that tool, I guess, to, to bring them to the orchestra. So I started to kind of specialize in that, um, in that domain. Right. Uh, now, Jeremy, was it your idea to create a show for orchestra with your music? Oh, and hi to your cat. And I love that. <laughs> Why don't we talk about this together? Um, oh my goodness. Um, can you can you just ask the question one more time? I was. A... <laughs> uh, was it uh, your idea to create a show for orchestra? Um, kind of, yeah, kind of, no. I don't know. Like, um, it's funny. Like, I was telling you about Maggie Paul that I was sitting with and she's the one that kind of put me, oh my goodness, Max. Um, she kind of put me on this journey um, to go and check for those cylinders, you know? And, you know, I came back to her a year later and after listening to those recordings and sitting with those melodies and I said, um, I said, Maggie, like, these so they're so beautiful, these songs, like I'm astounded. Um, I hear like, I hear orchestra underneath. Because you hear this melody, but then there's like a, there's an underlying harmony in my mind. And as soon as I said that, she got up from the table. She says, yep, me too. And she oh, said, wow. that's, what, that's exactly <laughs> what I heard. And, wow. and so she, I just, in a way, I kind of feel like I'm, I, with the last tour that, that Lucas and I did, we got to take that, that show back home and, and showcase, yeah, that showcase, that, showcase that music with Symphony New Brunswick, like, at our home theater, Maggie was the the special guest there, and she got to see that that you know that dream come to fruition. So in she a way, was like I just yelling. Remember, she was like yelling from the back of the theater constantly. She was like she was just like voicing her like a love positive music. a positive heckle. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, that's funny. I forgot about that. Yeah, because like, think about that. Think about what it meant to her, right? Yeah, imagine that. So I have this little one who, because I've known her my whole life. You know, I kind of grew up. Yeah. Of, you know and to have I guess you know me go and fulfill that kind of dream that she had and she's like that's exactly what I heard when I heard those songs I heard a I heard a symphony orchestra and she you know she yeah so anyway we brought we brought her that orchestra and we want to do it again and we want to keep going and we want to you that's know right. I, I don't think there's ever a, a chance now to put this music back in the box Right, like now that now that we've had it in the most grand context, you know, with the full symphony orchestras across this country, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just want to keep going with that because yeah. it's and, such a yeah. I, I mean, it, it's amazing. You've also you've performed it with a lot of orchestras now, right? Like TSO and Kitchener Waterloo, Regina, Saskatoon. Uh, <laughs> what am I missing? I mean, you've Calgary. quite quite a number. Okay. Calgary, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we went amazing. all over. We went all over. You know, it's, I mean. It's, it's it's amazing it's like um I, i'm really excited that there's space now in the concert hall for these kind of conversations and these kind of shows you well know? do you think uh, uh jeremy we never talked about this but do you think part of maggie's uh you know excitement about seeing that concert is she may have never seen an indigenous artist in, on that stage i mean you know and and we were all gathered there for that music and you know and for you and like it must have been quite maybe almost bizarre for her to see that space being not just accepted, but um, celebrated in that way. That's it. That's exactly it, right? Because it's, it's such a 180, just yeah. in, her, in her lifetime of, of, what it, of what it meant to be right. singing. Because the orchestra, I mean, is almost a fundamentally like colonial, th I mean, it's like, it is a, as yeah. European as you can, as you, it's it, the jewel of the European crown, you know. Which, and, which is why it's so interesting that she heard orchestra. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, aren't we just aren't we just a product of this like this this dual existence of being contemporary people but also connected to old ways and old right. songs? 
Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, I was I was so happy to get to go there and share that for her and, right. and to show her that these are our spaces and, and kind of get to have that conversation across the country with many different orchestras. For a lot of different orchestras, this was the first time that they brought in and collaborated with local indigenous people. And we had openers right. and we had people, we had dancers up front of the shows. And well, tell them about that, because like every show is different, right? Sometimes we had fashion contests or, or fashion shows. Sometimes we had like indigenous uh, o, 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 drum circles. To open. You always you always reached out to local artists to open. Totally. Shows, right? and, and my sense is that it's like, it's not about me kind of coming in and like dictating being like well we need you to come in and share one song and and have your dancer and no it's like like let's dream let's dream and let's empower the 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 symphony organization to start building those relationships right hmm. you know okay that, uh, interesting that maybe maybe that's a challenge for us well thank you for that. <laughs> that's good to know no, it's, um, a call, it's just a call to action it doesn't have to be like um this or anything yeah, yeah. like it can just be like yeah well we should be if we're going to invite indigenous artists into this space rather than having it be oh why don't you come and showcase your culture for our regular yeah. audience why don't we make yeah. it an opportunity to to engage a new audience and like make well, sure that those people know what's going on yeah yeah actually just a, a week after you we we have another show a, a community family show uh called the spirit horse returns which is an indigenous production as well so cool. um Two in October. It's nice not to be the only one. <laughs> yeah. I think about, well, we just did it. We did it. We just did a show for Buffy Saint Marie, you know, and I, I just a couple of days ago, and um, I just think so much about how often, often, often she was the only one. Yeah, you know? she's a trailblazer. Yeah. yeah. Totally, totally. And now we sit in this space where, even in a classical program, we might not be the only voice. Yeah. And that's so important because we are so varied. You know, me coming in as a as a Wulusto person um to to Hamilton it's like what business do I have is I'm just as much of a, a guest on those territories as 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 all y'all yeah. are so so it's like I gotta we gotta always be thinking local and be thinking about who's whose land we stand on and and, and what, how we're able to gather in this place and who has been pushed out of you know these lands and waters because of, we've got a nice little concert hall here. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So let's bring them in. Let's invite them in. Let's remind yeah. them that 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 there's still relationship to be had. Now uh, let's get into the nitty gritty of your show. Speaking of the concert hall and what we're going to be hearing in the concert hall. So first of all, how did you two hook up? Well, we haven't quite yet, but yeah, who uh, knows. Who knows? This is uh -huh. so it was, an all ages um, show. It was through uh, it was Gordon Gerard, right? Because he, uh, so the music director of Regina Symphony, yeah. first introduced me to uh, to Jeremy's music because he knew you from from university or something. Oh gosh, yeah, it goes way back. Like yeah. to my, to my days of being an opera student at Dalhousie right. University. He had how did he even know? Because the album wasn't released yet. So how did he even know of your stuff? And uh, um, I think. What it was, was we had just kind of stayed in touch um, since the school days. And then I, I was coming through and I did a residency at the National Music Center in Calgary. And he was there at the time. And I did a little performance where these were at the very, very start when I was just yeah. kind of starting to show my arrangements in public mm -hmm. um, and doing the very first demos. Like I hadn't recorded a record or anything like that. Even. I was just kind of doing the demos. And uh, he had come to that public kind of showing of the demos uh, in Calgary. And it was just like, oh yeah, you should like, how big do you want to go with this? And I was like, well, yeah, I would love to take <laughs> it to an orchestral setting. Because for me, that's like, the, it's the marriage of those two ways of making music, right? Um, Absolutely, in, in yeah. A high form. yeah. Then he, cause then Gerard, so they were doing a festival, part of their Forward Currents oh, festival yeah. uh, in it's Regina. RSO, right? I had yeah. done, been doing some arranging work for Gordon. I conduct there a lot as well. and. So he reached out and said, hey, they're, you know, listen to these songs. We want to do two or three uh, songs of, of Jeremy's. And, and uh, you know, they were as yet unreleased. I'd never he heard the songs or, or, or of Jeremy. And, and uh, you know, when you hear these mentioned, I mean, when you hear these songs, they're just like, they, they all of a sudden live in your mind forever. Like they're just these kind of, you know, haunting and beautiful and beautiful things. So, so I wrote those arrangements. Uh, and then almost concurrently, we uh, Toronto Symphony wanted to do a like a gala, like kind of a private gala concert or something, and um, and so we so Jeremy was a featured artist in that, um, 
and then you won the Juno, like concurrent, like I, well, all that was happening, and then and then the kind of full symphony show uh, just seemed like a, a a natural extension from that. So yeah, we just started with a couple of songs, and and then we uh, we did the did the whole show. Okay, build yeah, build, so build it up slow. We did yeah. it. Yeah, good timing, well thought out. I don't know who did that, but. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. And now, uh, Jeremy, you uh, kind of mentioned this. You are a classically trained tenor. You're, you're a pianist. So, I mean, I think you're a little bit different than than many other people in the pop scene in that you have this musical literacy, right? So you can write everything down and, and a lot of people in the pop world don't necessarily. So, I mean, did you, did you present Lucas with completely written down uh, pieces? <laughs> Here you are. Oh, of course Go on, I, tell, no, her, tell her. Tell her what you presented. Tell her what you presented me with. And we're recording this, right? Like this is a, this is going out into the world. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> the family edition. Okay, what's the family edition of this story? Um, yeah, I. What was it? Uh, it was it was a, some pretty rough sketches. It was like, hey, here's an album. Um, I think I had shot some above like aerial topical view. <laughs> so we did a videos of me a playing point of view, a point of view video for each song of his yeah. hand. And that was all that fun. I was like, it was, it was kind of creepy is that like, I mean, it took me literally probably eight months to write this show. And like for that, and we'd never met really. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. And like, so for that, for that whole time, all I saw was, his hands on a keyboard on his keyboard and like this like ghost figure who I never met it, you know and like if if, it, <laughs> and if there was like an error or something he'd be like oh not that or you know he would just like keep playing you know and like yeah it was kind you'll of figure weird. it out <laughs> wow. I still have we should get together some night and just watch your watch your oh your, your your videos that you said and they're all from like different like you were in like a bunch of different apartments and pianos and on tour I was, and, like, I was like in the middle like, of the store you were like one was from like a grand piano in like the Capitol Theater and the other one was from like an like a Casio keyboard in you know? my apartment in Toronto yeah I remember wow. this distinctly oh my so God. That, Lucas that is a huge amount of work then and it's yeah, Jeremy it sounds like to me yeah. you you could have made Lucas life easier but you didn't oh sure <laughs> really. oh sure oh sure but I think there's 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 the, there's a there's a blood and a sweat and a, a pain to the work that I think <laughs> that's not wrong though that's not uh, that's not wrong because like the thing is when you lit when you're transcribing it from the roots and I had the stems so so like I was it so because the album is really well produced uh yeah and, and it has a lot it is very the tapestry of the album is extraordinary mm. so uh you know when you have for those of you who don't know you you can uh, albums are mixed from from many different uh bass like bed tracks so like you you record the kit separately and even the even the drum set you record like the hi hat separately and the overhead sound and then the bass and then the voices and then the harmonies and so you can split that up into fifteen you know separate tracks and and I was I was luckily able to get those from the producer and so in addition to the to the to the pan shot we were talking about then I ha I had those bass tracks and I could I could transcribe the musical content uh, so accurately uh, sometimes it you know I had to adjust it because you know a synth sound doesn't it does not an exact equivalent to everything on a on a pop album in an orchestra yeah. but you, you know I was able to have that you know to really take apart and reverse engineer those things so in a way yeah it could have maybe been easier some some like rock bands give me you know a chart and they have the, this is the chord we do here and these are the lyrics and whatever but like you know when you have to go and tear it apart and put it back together you, you I mean you really you really live with it uh in in a pretty uh, uh you know extraordinary way that is so beautifully put, Lucas. I've never heard you speak about that. Uh, and, <laughs> and I guess in a, in a way, we're doing therapy now. So in a way, yeah. I always I felt uh, bad, you know, or, or kind of reluctant because I wasn't able to provide you with uh, maybe more concrete uh, musical methods or forms that, that were, you know, because I, yeah. But, but did, Jeremy, did, did you provide ideas like for this number, I have this in mind with the orchestra? Did you, or did you just let Lucas? There was like a pretty, loose? there's a pretty like extensive level of, of musical trust, I think. And that's where, yeah. why I think it started, why, why, why we built it up slow. And I think, you know, starting with those first couple pieces and having a chance to be like, okay, how is this, how is this man gonna hold this music? You know, how is that's he gonna, right. 
Because I had, I had videos of your hands, but you had nothing of me. I have nothing of you. Just a Google <laughs> image search. I, told you, I should have shown you point of view videos of me like ty typing or whatever. You could have yeah. you could have had the reverse experience. Well, listen, hey. I, I'll, I'll receive those videos at any time. At any you know, time. I would say, Abigail, the, the, the toughest part going back and forth was, was to because sometimes Jeremy, which is the beauty of the music, uh, is that sometimes, you know, Jerry we will perform uh, the same song in different ways uh, and, in, and in different uh, phrase lengths and in different, like, because when he's accompanying himself on the, on the piano for certain songs, he can take more time or less time. He can add bars or take away bars because those original um, melodies that he's working with are, are, are unmetered, really. You, you have to kind of add meter retrospectively to them so that so when you look at the scores they're like they're all meters are like three four 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 nine eight six eight. like they're all like because you have to you have to account for the for the for the pacing of the melody but the thing is jeremy will in live performance will do it slightly differently so i had to find a way to explain to him okay in this second phrase but i couldn't use bar numbers because he didn't have it barred so like i had to say like this second time when this melody comes around and you go up to this high note how long do you hold it idea you know what i mean like it was it's is like it this long or is it this long a yeah, or yeah. B? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Not, and we're yeah. still not sure for a few of them no <laughs> <laughs> no music is fluid I don't know. Uh, except yeah. it's not in an orchestral sense wow. everyone needs to know exactly what's going on yeah this is this exactly. is so interesting and also interesting to me how you go from having an, an album you know highly produced album to then a, a live show where everybody needs to know exactly what's going on it's it's definitely a big challenge uh, Lucas uh, I wonder if for you the lines were ever blurred between composing and arranging I mean I, I, I looked at the scores and there, there are a lot of interesting things you're putting in there um, and you know I think that's uh, that that's probably you like do you have a <laughs> how much do you feel uh, you can put in there I, I am not a composer in any way so the everything that's in those I mean there's a couple of little everything that's in those uh, is either directly transcribed or inspired by the album. Okay. So, I mean, for better or for worse, my talent is distributing musical content. So like sometimes, you know, if I have to like compose an instrumental break or whatever, like I'm at, totally at a loss. Uh, mm -hmm. But if I have great musical content to work with, I mean, I've seen so many hundreds and thousands of scores over the years, like all, my talent, if I can say, is making the orchestra sound good. Uh, with the content yeah. that's available. So I'm like a used car salesman. I, I don't like create the car. I don't drive the car. I just like, I just like, you know, put, uh, take someone else's content uh, and, and, and get it to the right people basically. And, um, and so that's, so yeah, I'm really proud of the scores. I'm not taking anything away from my, my job, but I'm just saying that, you know, for those, there was so much musical content um, to work with. And, and we should also talk Jeremy, uh, you know, because we touched on your classical uh, training, let's say, but <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, either quotes or inspiration of classical composers in, in this music. I mean, there's like direct yeah. Stravinsky quotes. Don't come for me, Stravinsky. Like, That's open source. It's like Brahms. Oh, I like saw that part. All the, all the down bows, the consecutive yeah, down the down yeah. Bows, yeah. And so what I had to do is like, again, because I'm not a composer, what I had to do, because it's in a different the way he plays is an approximation. Like Jeremy, like it, it comes out the same, but it's not the exact same chords, right? So I had to see what Jeremy's doing from the video. And then I, I looked in the actual Stravinsky score and I said, how can I make the orchestra, how can I split the difference between these things? Uh, and so like, so yeah, in a way you, 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 you by, yeah, by exploration and study and, and examination, you can, you can, Kind of transcribe that stuff like there's a very brahms there's very like a brahms one moment uh, in in a lot of this stuff but like you know this uh, i don't know where this stuff came from for you jeremy maybe tell the folks i mean i know you love stravinsky and I, you love dvorak and was it just as you're noodling around on the piano that's just what you heard or or you were trying to fit them in somewhere or all the boys yeah wow um yeah right stravinsky like yeah even schubert got in there i think once or twice yeah, but, yeah, yeah. um yeah, I guess it's just, we're all kind of composites of what we've experienced and heard and, and kind of uh, have been part of our sonic experience up until that point, right? So yeah. at that time, I had just, I was, you know, fresh out of 
classical music school. Yeah. Um, I, I was I was really kind of dripping and drenched in this like um, Western classical canon. And um, I think it was just inevitable. Like as I sat down and was starting to arrange, I don't consider myself much of a, I was, I, I trained as a vocalist, I never trained as a pianist. So I don't, it was just a, it's a matter of like, just trying to get out what's in here. It's very just practical. Um, but sometimes when you're like, you know, just sitting down at the piano and you're like, oh yeah, how does that one go from right of spring? Oh yeah, that's so, I love that piece of like, oh, there's that little- Well, that's what makes it special is the quotes are not direct quotes. They're almost like, they're almost like nods of approval. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost like, that's what I mean is like when I watch, when I watch your hands do it, you get the right effect, but it's like not at all the same chord. Like, it's like kind of amazing how it uh -huh. works out. Interesting. <laughs> so it's like filtered through your memory. Yeah, somehow. it is exactly and, that. And that's and, what makes and, it special, yeah. And I think it works, that works so well, even just with the, the concept of the album, it seems like you're uh, sort of speaking back in time to your ancestors. Uh, and you're speaking back in time to other composers from the past as well. So totally, and, and that that marriage of traditions is 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 wholesale for me. I wanna, I wanna, I, I wanna. There's so much beauty in that in that classical Western tradition. Like I don't want to just say like, oh no, I'm just gonna do my own thing over here. Yeah, I do want to do my own thing, but like let's also let's 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 honor the beauty everywhere. Why do we we can't? Why do we have to say this instead of that? There can be there can be a coming together, I think. Yeah, yeah, very nice. And now I notice you also have some arrangements by Owen Pallet mm -hmm. uh, on the show. Uh, another the the other I think uh, Polaris music winning uh, composer who has classical training. Uh, I actually went to school with Owen in, in composition at U of T. Um, but I mean, he does he does a really beautiful job of, of orchestral arranging. Um, and uh, so, Lucas, this this question is for you. I mean, how do you really make the most of the orchestra in this situation and not just have them as a backup role? And I also wonder if you have an extra bit of pressure because you know you're gonna be the one on the podium. They're gonna be looking at you and they're gonna to wanna to be playing <laughs> good lines. Yeah. Well, when I first started to like arrange, like the thing is I've been conducting like non-classical content basically my whole career, you know, like you know, Irish tenors and, and the Cirque de symphony like basically like usually non-classical content and the, the thing is when you get into arranging I remember the first couple of shows that I did is like I was like wow my name's on this thing and like if it sucks I like they're gonna be right in front of me being like man this sucks but the problem is, the thing is when you're a conductor whatever's in front of them it's your responsibility so like what I found is that if we were playing arrangements that were not good I would get the rap anyway, because it's supposedly my show or my, you know, what I brought to them. So like, I figured if I'm taking responsibility, if I'm getting, you know, the pros and the responsibility for this, I might as well be responsible for it. Like I might as well write it and actually have responsible responsibility. So I don't think about that much anymore. Um, you know, you just, you write the thing and you write the best that you, the, you know, the, the best that you can. And, um, uh, and you, and I'm proud of my work. So, you know, there are always people that, that like your work and people that don't like your work. But, um, you know, for, for Owen, I worked with him, I conducted, we were talking about Buffy, I conducted Buffy's uh, concert with Toronto Symphony a few years back and Owen did all those arrangements. Um, so I was in touch with him, uh, you know, for a couple of different projects. And, uh, and then uh, Jeremy, you worked with him, I guess, uh, for, for this new, newer, well, did you, I was like, did you even put us in touch? Because I remember that was kind of the calculation around like why I worked with Owen for this next record of mine. Right. Was because I was like, who, who, who exactly by name and where, what's their number? Like who did Buffy's arrangements? Because yeah. I, want, I want that person. And well, the interesting like, thing, yeah, about, about working with, I don't know about your experience working with Owen. I've actually never met Owen. We've only like passed oh, Gordon. Really? I've never met him yet. Oh, wow. Uh, really? But like he, you can tell, again I'm not a composer so I'm a distributor but when you do actually work with composer arrangers it really is a different experience because like those Buffy I could not write those Buffy charts because the way I could write different Buffy charts but I could not write those Buffy charts because he he has a different uh, he has a different way of reimagining uh sounds he'll like like for me if I hear something on a record that's strings I'll put it in the strings because that's just the way it's been distributed but he he can reimagine things and he'll put it like in a brass ensemble and a fanfare and like 
I, 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 I don't really work like that. So I think it's great that this uh, this new show, because we these, those arrangements by Owen haven't yet been featured live actually. So oh, okay. this will be the very first time, you know, some Hamilton Ooh, Phil uh, debut yeah. here of, of a couple of these new songs and Yay, it's that's great to have know. a couple Thanks. of different arrangers on there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Uh, so uh, Jeremy, I, if you could just tell me what, what did you think when you first heard some of Lucas's arrangements? I mean, your, your music reimagined through somebody else's ears and eyes. Well, there's, there's, uh, yeah, wow. Well, there's two kind of moments of that realization, right? Because there's the, <clears throat> well, maybe even three. Because there's the, <laughs> there's the getting to like having somebody take that album, like that raw material of what came out of my mind, and put it into an orchestral context, which I'm quasi familiar with, but not, so I've never played in an orchestra. I don't really know how they work. Um, so um, to see it in that context, and then also the other realization of getting to physically see that my music scored out for the first time. As Lucas was saying, it was like, for, for remember for the first song on the album, it's like on that first page of scored music is like 10 different time signatures, just cause it's like, it's loose, you know, it's fluid. It, you know, the, the music comes in a different way. So that was interesting. Um, but then to see how he kind of like took, you know, cause it was a really small ensemble for the recording of the album. It was just me on the piano, an upright bass, a, a, a string quartet, um, and then somebody on electronics. Like it's really, it's a really, really sparse uh, arrangement. And yeah, just to see in the ways like, I don't know, I never want you to sell yourself down like that. I feel like there's so much composition that went into realizing. Yeah, my, my jobs, my jobs to be humble, but when it comes this, down to it, I'm still the boss. Okay, well, let me lift you up for a, let me lift you up for a second. Where I belong, man. Come on. On come the podium. On. Love lifts me up. Yeah. Get on the podium. <laughs> get your baton. Get on the podium. Let's do a show already. Um, but anyway, so so much to say. It's been such a constant like realization of the well-founded nature of my musical trust in that human you know just because I, I I kind of offered these songs are so dear you know they're ancestral they're like you know for the people it's like um means a lot um to our to our small community in the east and I hope to to indigenous people that don't speak our language and that aren't connected but have this same story of of, of coming home yeah, and, and i think uh, you've really become a a champion of uh, of language rights and you know this is interesting that i think you i think i've uh, read that about a hundred people speak your language is that about right well i guess yeah well this is it's a bit of a it's a bit of a misnomer now because when we get stuck in statistics it's um you know this is i believe it's like People who, uh, this is their first language and they're fluent um, since, you know, this is like, so we have a lot of, but it, when we start to get into the like, oh, there's only a hundred people left, we start to be um, stuck in this death narrative. And I think when, when I look out and I see that, you know, we have our first immersion school that just opened up this last month, you know, we have young people that are, that are on fire right now about li linguistic revitalization. You know, we have media and content. We have our first cartoons in our language. You know, there's, there's like so much stuff that's happening right now. So, um, yeah. Well, there's is, there's no, sorry, there's no doubt that you've been a big inspiration here. So, oh, come on. A, no. A, no, no, this is a big success story. But I, well, I also this, wonder, yeah. you know, in this, sorry, in the context of the show, do you explain all of the meaning of, of the pieces of the songs to everybody? I mean, because obviously there aren't going to be people there that can speak the language. I know, isn't that unfortunate? I wish we could have uh, just just rooms and rooms full of Ulustagway speakers that, that would uh, no, uh, but we don't, and that's uh, even a lot of our own people don't have a literal understanding of what what I'm singing about. But sometimes so, you course, go, yeah, like, think, sometimes you do like four or five songs in a row, not not speaking English. Well, because you know, yeah, the whole time, like even your introductions are in Willistook, uh, which is Gaelic, right? You know. Uh, yeah, I think what what I try to because also like, with that first album, there was no translations provided. There's that's a certain true, yeah. sense of like. Um, irreconcilable space of like, this is, you know, we can just have a conversation with each other. And there's, we should be asking ourselves why we don't know these languages, you know, mm -hmm. that are from here, that are rooted here. Um, 
and and maybe we can sit in that mystery instead of having to know. Um, I think the like the the like the the incessance of like needing to know. You know, of course we have these uh, devices now, and we can get any piece of information that we have. You know, right there. Um, I think we're we're increasingly uncomfortable in spaces where uh, it might not be for us. You know, I'm spending a lot. <laughs> spending a lot of time. I, I live in Montreal now, and so I spend a lot of time in surrounded by language that I don't really understand. You know, and and just having to to be in spaces that are not necessarily equipped or designed for me, which is a first first language English speaker is very rare in this world. So um, it's yeah, I, I you know, there's a certain sense of the use of language as an orienter, or like it points the direction of who this is for, which is not to be exclusionary, which is not to say that people aren't invited around to come and witness what we're doing here. But at the end of the day, you know, I created this work for Wulustui, you know, our people. So like uh, to, to see how beautiful our songs and our languages are. And if we, if we marry them with this high, high, high Western art form, so let's see how far and how beautiful we can make them. And well, you it's get crazy, Jeremy. Like, eh? what, what, What's crazy, man, is that like, you know, I didn't know New Brunswick barely at all. Like, you know, the, you basically introduced me to the province, right? And, and like, we went to the museum there. We saw the, the grand, the Aguidin, the grandfather uh, canoe, you know, which has a whole history. And like, you know, me, seeing that province through you and me and your family, like I still talk to your mom on text, like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, I have to say, it's weird going back there now for like just regular concerts. Like when I've been back now a couple of times to do like Star Wars or like, and like for me, it's all, it's still Malazit. You know what I mean? Like, it's just weird to, to, to me, it, it like, it, you know, I think that's the power of this music is, you, you know, for some people it's their first introduction to that, uh, you know, to that genre and to that area and to that culture. And it forever will be. I mean, New Brunswick forever for me is Malazit. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's kind of amazing. And that's what we gotta. And that's it. This is this is it. This is what we gotta do. We gotta we gotta share ourselves with each other, and we gotta we gotta show that the relationship is possible. Because yeah. for me, in my home, it was always possible. Like I come from an interracial home where you know my mother's indigenous, my father's non-indigenous, and I got to see their love and how they just had to make it work, even though they come from very di very different cultures. You know, so it was just um, it was always possible. And and getting to meet people that get it. And that hear it, you know, and that feel it. Um, this this makes the work a lot easier because um, it's yeah. yeah it, sometimes telling these stories in a in a wide way can be vulnerable as well um, because you put a lot when we talk about language, when we talk about loss, when we talk about you know some of these new songs that are engaging some kind of hard topics. And so it's like, it's like trying to look at music as a place of healing you know, and, and, and a place of where we can all do that work and come together around kind of issue, like specifically when it comes to indigenous and non-indigenous relations, we don't really have spaces to come together around these conversations, like physical well, songs are in English, actually, some of those more heavy ones. Oh, yeah, right. So let's, let's, and this is kind of a pivot to, to having those big discussions, right? Because as, as nice as it was to be to have those first songs well received by non-indigenous people, they didn't know what I was saying. It was it was nice and maybe easy for them to engage with the content. And you know, I think about it actually in context with my parents too, because my dad will just put on that first record and he just does it while it works. And it's like, you know, it's fine for my mom. She like needs to like sit down and have a tea and like she's like have a Kleenex box present. It's like it means something different because she understands on, on in a literal way and in, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, there's just a different context, right? So, um, where was I going with this? Uh, I forget. Well, you know what? I, I think you two have given us uh, such a great grounding and uh, well, I think we'll all be really inspired and very excited to hear this concert on October 22nd. So thank you for your time. We very much look forward to having you in Hamilton. For those of you watching this, please join us October 22nd, Jeremy Dutcher with the HBO conducted by Lucas Walden. We'll see you there. Thank you. Thank you. See you there. What a pleasure. Take care.